This week's specials at Miles Franklin are one ounce silver Krugerrands, only 310 over spot. We also have 10th ounce gold maples, $35 over melt. Just email me, slayer at milesfranklin.com. We have a massive inventory and I'll always make sure to give you great prices since all of my clients are my subscribers. It's a unique situation that I'm honored to offer. You are about to watch a small clip from Peter Krauth at the Metals Investor Forum. This is a seminar. He breaks down silver's demand, the supply deficits, why the prices haven't moved yet, and how much opportunity silver's true value really has. So sit back, relax. I'm going to share my thoughts at the end of this clip, but uh, until then, just pay attention because he breaks this down brilliantly. Enjoy. Now let's switch to the industrial side of, of silver. Solar is really the 800 pound gorilla in the, in the silver market. It's really uh, driving industrial demand. Just four years ago, it was about 100 million ounces. Next year, it's already forecast to be over 200 million ounces. So just tremendous growth coming from just solar alone. That's 20% of all the silver that's supplied every year is going just to one application, not just industrial, but one application period of all uses of silver. Now, this is a bit of a, of a wake-up call when it comes to uh, expectations in silver. So I thought it'd be interesting to look at what forecasts were for silver and what the reality ended up being last year. So first one is supply forecast. Overall supply between mining and um, recycling was forecast that the supply would be up 2% eventually had to be revised down. So silver was actually, overall supply of silver last year was down 2% in, in the face of surging demand. Industrial demand for silver forecast was up, uh, was it was for demand to be up 4%. It was revised at double that, up 8%. The solar demand alone for silver was forecast for last year to be 140 million ounces that ended up being revised at 190 million ounces. That's more than 30% underestimated. Supply deficit last year for silver, the forecast was 142 million ounces. It ended up being revised at 194 million ounces. Again, more than a 30% underestimate for silver. So the Silver Institute thinks these deficits are going to continue. These structural deficits are going to continue for years going forward. But then you ask yourself, why is the silver silver price flat in this kind of environment when we're facing these large structural deficits. And here's what I think is the answer. You've got a lot of what I call secondary silver that's sitting in um, ETFs, physically backed ETFs, and on the futures exchanges. And if you look at what's been happening in the futures exchanges, there are three main exchanges, the COMEX in the US, then you've got the Shanghai in China, and then you've got the LBMA in London. Overall inventories are down on average about 30 to 40 percent across these four exchanges. That's all the silver in those exchanges. Similar uh, action in London, similar action in Shanghai. And that's, and then you see silver holdings into ETFs. Those have come down as well. So I think what's happening is that you've got these large industrial players are buying long futures contracts. They're buying silver ETFs that are backed by silver, and then they're just standing for delivery. And they know that the silver is sitting there. It's a way to get the silver at you know the current low, undervalued, I believe, spot price. This is a, this is a summary of it, but what's interesting is there's silver on these exchanges, and then there's registered silver. And registered silver is the silver that's actually available for delivery. So if, if you hold a long contract, that's what you need to be looking at. How much of the silver on that exchange is really available for me to take delivery of? And that's a small portion of the overall silver held at, at the exchange. In Shanghai, registered silver is down 73%. On the COMEX, it's down 70%. At the LBMA overall, it's down 32%. So now, relative to commodities. This is a chart that goes to about a year ago or so. It's not all that different. We know that commodities have, had a, uh, have struggled in the past year or so. But if you compare how silver has behaved to commodities overall, they've, 
the silver has not kept up with the uh, with the rally in commodities. So there's this disconnect and a lot of room for silver to play catch up. And that again speaks to the opportunity. I like to say that silver is a patience trade. It's very much like how we've seen Bitcoin over the last few years, uranium as well over the last few years. It goes through these long periods of moving sideways, really not doing a whole lot, and then all of a sudden it just explodes higher. In the last six months or so, we saw Bitcoin double in price, we saw uranium double in price, and here I thought was a, uh, an appropriate quote from, from Rick Rule. He said uh, just last month, the silver equity market resembles that of uranium in 2022. It's stupidly cheap. So that's something I, I'd like to leave you with in terms of thoughts of where the silver market is. Now I'm sure you understand why I really wanted to share this seminar with you guys because he breaks down so many important factors. Comparing silver to uranium and Bitcoin is an interesting one because both of those were extremely undervalued, blatantly obvious. And then all of a sudden, things escalate quickly. Look at these charts. It's not a gradual incline. It is instant. And like you see that quote from Rick Rule, silver equity market resembles that of uranium in 2022. It's stupidly cheap. Silver is 100% stupidly cheap. And when you look at the other statistics he shows most importantly the amount of silver or lack thereof in all of these exchanges the shanghai gold exchange is down 73 percent comex is down 70 percent lbma vaults down 32 percent this is very concerning because he's saying if these people try to turn their contracts into physical it would explode the market. It would, it would destroy it. It would come crumbling down. And that is where silver's price is held up or where it's held down. And taking a step even further, you can see the realities. He shows a chart. Silver forecast, the supply, we thought would be up 2%. We thought we would start going positive for production, but actually it was negative. We were down 2%, not up we fell short. Industrial demand, we thought would be up 4%. Well, industrial demand was up 8%. It was double what we thought. So imagine all of these forecasts moving forwards if they are way higher than we already assume and the assumptions already show a very, very scary situation of the silver supply deficit since we're already breaking records. Solar demand forecast 140 million ounces. It was up 190 million ounces. Think about EVs. We thought the supply deficit would be 142 million ounces. Well, it was actually 194 million ounces. So if we're assuming these numbers, but they're way higher, way more extreme than we're assuming, which is already throwing up red flags, then what is actually going to happen by the year 2027, 2028? What will these numbers actually look like? instead of just what we assume. And even the assumptions are extremely, extremely concerning and for reasons that I don't think most people understand unless you watch my channel. Most people look at gold's value, gold's potential, and put silver in the same category. They think whatever gold's gonna do, silver's gonna do, and those two metals have the same potential. But that is so far from the truth that's so far from the truth. You could see that quote from Rick Rule, how he says silver's stupidly cheap. Well, Rick Rule posted a video right here, I'll share, where you could see that he's even mentioning this is not the case whatsoever. Silver is, is in a completely different league from gold in terms of opportunity and potential. Here is a video from Rick Rule which is very good friends with Andy Sheckman, one of the most respected people in the industry, saying gold is leading the charge, but silver will, and I quote, shatter all expectations in 2024. When we look at both metals, they both have their place. Both are great investments. I still recommend investing into both. Both represent wealth even beyond the investment side. But it's just a fact that silver has something 
going for it that gold simply does not. I'm not trying to say one's better than the other. I'm just simply saying that in terms of price valuation, silver has something working for it, which is the industrial side. The silver shortage, the record-breaking supply deficits of silver, the amount of silver we need going green, the lack of silver. These are all things, especially looking at miners. Keith Neumeyer, the CEO of First Majestic Silver, is mentioning he, he mines silver himself only around 10 to 15 million ounces a year. 10 to 15 million ounces when, record, or when demand is 1.2 billion ounces. The top silver miners in the, in the United States only, only mine around 10 million ounces. Uh, Phillips, uh, Phillips uh, Baker, the CEO of Hecla Mining, he said he had a record this year of 16 million ounces, but the past couple of years was 10 to 11 million ounces. So with demand increasing and with silver's price down, here's the point I'm getting to, with silver's price so cheap, miners aren't going to have any motivation to, to dig it up. Why would you want to look for silver when gold is 85 times more valuable? When an ounce of gold, the same exact ounce of silver, is above $2,000, why wouldn't you look for the thing that's $2,000 an ounce instead of $25 an ounce? It makes a lot more sense. They're looking for gold and lead and zinc. Silver's a byproduct. But if you read what he's showing, what he's showing in this screen, you can see the reality of things. And when we start to see the COMEX collapse or when the amount of physical deliveries will start to push delayed times or even have to just settle in cash, you're going to start to see a big change in silver's value because that is where the price is held down. Like, uh, like Peter Kraut just said in this seminar, he goes over why silver's price is flat and he mentions what I just said when the amount of paper, the paper contracts start to start to subside beyond the physical, where the physical, the fundamental supply and demand start to overweigh all of this manipulation, this illegal, corrupt price manipulation. So I just wanted to share this with you guys, and I recommend you guys check out these videos. Um, go check out the entire interview or the seminar from Peter Kraut. Check out this, this video titled, Gold is Leading the Charge, but Silver Will Shatter All Expectations. He's talking about $8,000 gold in this video, by the way. And, uh, you know, if you want to push $8,000 gold, what would silver be, especially if the ratio keeps dropping? Well, we're talking about some pretty high prices regardless. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Remember, Slayer at milesfranklin.com. We have great prices. Krugerrands 310 uh, over spot. It's, it's incredible. Slayer at Miles Franklin. Also, make sure you subscribe. We are we hit 100,000 subscribers, so I'll be jumping out of an airplane soon announcing the winners to my silver giveaway. Thanks for tuning in. This was Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.